Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasike. Time for that interview of Matters Football Kenya Federation Elections and in studio is former Kenya international Innocent Mutizo. You played for uh, local clubs as well, Madara United, Gormaya, uh, and so on and so on. And of course he's here to share his agenda as far as his joint presidential bid alongside Bonfas Osano in FKF elections. Good to see you, Bana. You've been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time, Kweli. I'm good. Kosalama? Ni Kosalama, Kabisa. What informed your candidature? First of all, uh, when I ran for the K4 chairmanship, yes. it's definitely I was ambitious. It was I, was I was going to be there for the rest of my life. Yes. I was looking at the big seat there, and uh, an opportunity came in uh, earlier in the year of which someone actually told me to run for the top seat as the president. And uh, I was saying I cannot, I cannot rival uh, the incumbent because of uh, the resources, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how flexibility he, he, he has uh, in, uh, in uh, matters monetary. Yes. Yeah. And I said, hey, don't worry, we will support you. Yeah. So after that, we, di we didn't talk for a while, and I was still thinking. But then I received a phone call from uh, Bonfas Osano, and he told me, Mutiso, we have to meet. I want to talk to you about something. Yes. And I didn't know what it was all about. And we met, actually, here in, ta uh, in town. Yes. And uh, he explained to me uh, what he wanted. As everyone else knows, yes. he had uh, declared his candidacy last year, uh, yeah. mid last year, hmm. uh, that he wanted big seat at the helm. And uh, he gave me his agenda. And uh, it was very impressive, actually. And the confidence that he showed on me, a former footballer, he told me that he's been following me. He, he knows about how vocal I used to be when I was at Madar United, at Gorma here. And uh, my, my, my input when I was care for president, uh, the way I used to speak out for the players. And uh, actually, that confidence in me, it was, I was very impressed. And uh, I could just not say no. And uh, I accepted the bid, and um, uh, since then we were actually uh, going through one or two, three, three things so that we unveil ourselves, and that happened last week on Tuesday. Oh, sorry, it's mm. good that Mutizo is here so that he clears the air, because there have been rumors being peddled around that these two <laughs> <laughs> are being used by somebody to, to you know, sanitize uh, and, you know, justify an illegality. I don't know. When you have you, have you, ha have we you had actually, the same as well? We, we actually talked about that that mm -hmm. time when we met with uh, Bon Pasosano when yes. he talked to, uh, when he told me about um, what wanting me to be his running mate, mm -hmm. and that came up because I asked, I told, uh, you know, people know oh. as uh, me especially to be a support of the federation. Yes, you know when we endorsed uh, we endorsed uh, Nick Mwendo, uh, the, the actually the, the, uh, the incoming. Federation. During team change. During team change, yes. endorse them. Mm -hmm. And uh, what people also don't want to say mm -hmm. is uh, that vote was not mine to give. Mm -hmm. It was not my decision to make. Yeah. And um, we had a meeting with the K4 board. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, Nick came and we had that meeting. Yeah. And everyone was impressed by the, ag the agenda. Yeah. We were 14 officials, 13 came, only one missed. So after that, you know very well we could not also still make that decision because it wasn't ours to make. Yes. So we, we sent uh, an, an SMS with the agenda to all f uh, club captains in the KPL, in the NSL, in the Women's Premier League, mm -hmm. and uh, also in Div 1 and Div 2. Yes. Yeah. We sent the messages uh, one week earlier, so they had time. And we also told them the agenda of the meeting. Yes. So they had time to conform with the, with the, with the fellow team uh, colleagues and um, uh, to come up with something uh, tangible to present yeah. uh, on the on the D-Day. So we had that meeting at Pan-Africa Pan Hotel, and uh, it was a unanimous decision. And uh, the car current uh, Federation president, he came uh, to the meeting, and um, he gave out his agenda for Kenyan football, for women football, and everyone was impressed. Yeah. So after he left, we had our own small meeting, and uh, we asked them, who do you think we can give our votes to, yes. because all the other aspirants wanted to meet with me alone. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, it wasn't my decision to make, yeah. it wasn't my vote to give. So it everyone was... was uh, careful as decision. Yes, yeah. everyone was impressed with, uh, with the, uh, the agenda yeah. uh, for team change, mm -hmm. and it was a unanimous decision, because yeah. by a show of hands, we just, everyone raised their hands. Yeah. So it was a unanimous decision, and that is what people are not talking about. Mm -hmm. I did not go with this alone. Yeah. I was representing the footballers, uh, the club captains and the K4 board. Yeah. 
we have a lot of propaganda we cannot deny that when it comes to football politics in kenya a lot of propaganda is being peddled here in here out and you never know where you stand and who to answer and who is going to expect the truth from but away from that no no we, we stick on that because i haven't yeah. i haven't answered uh the full uh anatomy okay, of, of it yeah. and um the whole thing it it was supposed to come you know this is politics yeah. and just like football it's dynamic yes. mm -hmm. one day you're here one the, the next day you're there yeah and uh, i was i had a sitting at the federation in the player status committee uh -huh. so yes. i continued my mandate uh, for fighting for players' rights, adv adv advocating for their rights. Yes. Since I resigned from CAFWA, I continued with it at the Federation. And uh, it started on well, but f since last year, we had only two meetings. And I started asking questions. Like, uh, there's a backlog, players are calling me actually uh, as, a, as an individual, and I, try, I was trying to, to help them with these cases because I sought out the, uh, some legal redress. And uh, there's a backlog, and I started asking questions like, why are we not having this meeting so that we do away with this backlog of cases? And uh, I, I, I guess I was set aside from then. And uh, from the inside now. Yes. The moment uh, you yes. Start I was. I don't know if uh, there were meetings called behind my back or yeah. not, but yeah. I have never, I've not attended a meeting since last year. What is the name of the committee? Can players? Players that status committee. That one you had been seconded by Kefwa then. Uh, it was just an appointment by the federation. By the federation, okay. exactly, yeah. because of my role uh -huh. uh, at Kefwa. Yes. And after I resigned from my role at Kefwa, yeah. uh, I continued with uh, mm -hmm. the fed uh, at the federation. Yes. Yes. Wow. Tough. So um, people have to know that I'm an ambitious guy, and Kefwa was not my last stand. And um, you cannot support someone for the rest of your life. Am I not allowed to spread my wings and fly? Everybody I, is allowed exactly. to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So I have every right to contest for the seat at the helm. Being a former footballer, uh, playing for the national team, winning titles, I have suffered in this Kenyan football. I have cried, I have uh, cheered with the titles I've won. you left football due to a <coughs> injury you had suffered, just before making a late comeback. Late e exactly. That's why I'm saying I have every right to go at the helm to try and change the way things are being done. And I'm proud of the things I changed while I, while I was ke at Kefwa, the structures uh, that uh, we, we put there. So right now, they're enjoying the fruits. And uh, at the Federation also right now, there have been structures which are, have been laid out that were not there before. But, <coughs> sorry, uh, it reached a point where they could not go on from uh, the structures. They did not ful fulfill the full potential of the structures. And that's why we need uh, fresh faces, we need new faces at the helm, so that we take football to the next level. That so was my question That now. is why. Yeah. Of the people that are vying for the Football Kenya presidency at the moment, you and Bonfess Osano are the people we can outright say are outsiders. Bonfess Osano is a journalist, football writer, and all that. He's an complete outsider from the main say, people that we have seen there. My question is, what is this agenda that convinced you? For when you sat with Bonfess Osano, he convinced you, and now you are in the same ticket together. What is this agenda that you have for Kenyan football? Uh, well, <coughs> that day we met, we took a look at uh, the other aspirants, and these are regular faces that we're used to uh, year in, year out, yeah. uh, who have been there at the helm, did nothing, mm -hmm. but still want that seat. Yes. And um, uh, we, we, were, we were underdogs, definitely. Yeah. But uh, you see, uh, when we go to, the to a football pitch, you don't expect to lose. Uh, you're going there to win. Yes. Uh, but me, I have a mantra that uh, even if you don't win, you still win because you take the lessons mm -hmm. you take to the next election. So yes. we are not in this election alone. We're yeah. also looking at the next election. Yeah. But if we win here, we win. But if we lose, we still win so because we'll be looking at the next one. So for you guys are planning for the, the election we, ahead. we are planning for this and the next one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we are not in this to just uh, uh, buckle up and uh, uh, just step be down more. just before yeah. the, the elections. Uh -huh. We are here until the end. Yeah. Yes. Why do you call yourself a dynamic duo? Is it uh, you well, it's it's a, it's <laughs> exactly, that's part of it. Uh, but we make a very, uh, uh, the perfect blend because he's been a sports journalist. He is a sports journalist. Yeah. And you see how you've seen, even he's his, vocal. His, his, his social media has been vocal, yes. the way he follows uh, African football. And he has traveled to some African countries. And uh, he knows the know-how of uh, what uh, other federations are doing. You get me? 
and uh, I, for myself, I know what needs to be done in Kenyan football. So that's how we make the dynamic duo because uh, he, he's bringing his blend of experience. I'm bringing my blend of experience from Kenyan football. You haven't answered my question mm -hmm. yet. Your agenda for Kenyan football. Uh, well, <coughs> there are some things that we, we want to change and uh, we also want to continue uh, implementing the structures that the, uh, the current regime uh, have, uh, have, have set up. Yes. And uh, one thing we really want to call uh, concentrate on is uh, club licensing to bring professionalism uh, to Kenyan football yes. and uh, I feel this is where this is one of the parts that the Federation uh, really uh, uh, had a nil uh, rating uh, yes. uh, because uh, they could have implemented this club licensing bit by bit. It's not something that can be done overnight. Where, where did they go wrong? Where did the Federation go wrong on club licensing? They just wanted to, uh, to uh, implement it in the first in their first year Which all of the uh, we, uh, exactly yeah. like all the teams had to meet the threshold the criteria and yet uh, if that happened they, uh, they found out that only four teams could, could qualify to pay that. to pay yes. uh, to play in the mm -hmm. Kenyan Premier League yeah. and uh, that was very wrong mm -hmm. uh, they could have started with some bits uh, s some threshold like um, like the basics one yeah. the basic one having a junior team Yes. which should be mandatory, um, uh, who should be also in the league that the FKF have formulated or the KPL. Yes. Uh, I, don't know, I don't remember the last time there was uh, the Under-20 KPL tournament, of which we don't mm. want it to be a tournament. We want it to be a league, an yes. ongoing league together with uh, the Premier League. Yeah. And um, uh, also having a secretariat. Mm -hmm. Many teams here in yeah. Kenya do not have a secretariat. Where the chairman is, is where the office is. And yes. uh, that's a very sad state of affairs. Mm -hmm. um, we also want uh, the medical cover for the players uh, so that you could s we will see players giving their all in, uh, in football matches because they will know that their medical expenses will be taken care of. Yes. You know, players, uh, when going to 50-50 challenge, uh, challenges, they will maybe uh, jump up so that they, they don't get that 50-50 clash because they know very well what happens when uh, you get you, you get an injury yes. and you don't have any medical cover mm -hmm. and uh, also we want to inst to have a minimum wage for the clubs it's mm -hmm. very sad that clubs ca in Kenya most of the clubs in Kenya cannot sustain themselves they yeah. ca they have to depend on the grants from the KPL and from the FKF Premier League uh, uh, and for, for, from the FKF uh, Federation so uh, these are some of the, for some of the things we want to change. And the first 100 days, uh, this is what we'll be concentrating on. We have not uh, already laid out our full manifesto. We will do it after we become candidates now, uh, after uh -huh. so handing over the paper. nominations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the things we want to concentrate on is the first the basics mm -hmm. of the club licensing. Well, that, yeah, actually, the first one I was talking about club licensing here of the presidents that we have had at the moment. And I have... I have had a, a keen interest of club licensing and many clubs, like the way you said it before, never met that threshold. And you have said in the first 100 days you are going to do that. The question usually is, more so with our clubs, is you get into the office, you have been duly elected, but after the election, politics follows you again. In that you get onto the federation, clubs don't forget that politics. They still follow with that politics to the office that you are going to. How are you going to deal with that? Because I understand that our education level more so in football is very low. We still have that Mta mentality everywhere we go. That Mta mentality is there. How are you going to deal with these people so that you can bring them from that to a level playing field where they can understand that this is what we need to do for us to move to the next level? Uh, well, uh, the kind of politics that we're bringing in the Federation, as I said, we, are, uh, we have fresh ideas, we have new faces there. So we'll bring a different blend of, of politics. And we're not in it uh, like uh, uh, we want to bring to, to, to have all-inclusive stakeholders. Yeah. We want uh, the politics of inclusivity. Uh, because that is what has been lacking uh, with the Federation. Yeah. Like uh, when you're not with us, then you're against us. Yes. So we won't work with you. Mm -hmm. So we, want, we do not want divisive politics. Yeah. politics. Mm -hmm. We are not in it. Uh, uh, we are in it for the long haul. Yeah. And we do not want... Football brings people together. Yeah. So we do not want divisive politics. We want politics which will include all stakeholders. Yeah. And especially in negotiating for sponsorships. Yeah. That is one of the main things where I can say KPL and FKF have been um, uh, failing because... Uh, 
uh, we uh, we need all stakeholders to be uh, to be involved in negotiations for sponsorship. Yeah. We need the footballers. Uh, uh, welfare that is now care for, or if there will be a union, uh, we need the referees association there, we need the co coaches re association there, and all the clubs. These are the main stakeholders in football. Mm -hmm. So we have to include them in, it, in the negotiations. Mm -hmm. How will the players benefit? How will the referees benefit? Mm -hmm. How will the, uh, will the, will the coaches benefit? Yeah. Because right now you'll, you'll find that in some leagues in the federation, you'll find that clubs are actually paying referees, yes. which is bad for the integrity of football. Yeah. So uh, these are some of the things that we will want to change as the dynamic duo. Well, a, a big one there. And now let's go ahead and discuss uh, what you said earlier. You, club licensing is a big one for you, and I'll give you that. But you have also said that there are some programs that the Federation has started. <laughs> What are the formulation of uh, uh, the center of excellence? Yes. I think uh -huh. it was a great idea, yes. but wrong, uh, wrongly implemented. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, because w it's not only in Nairobi. The, uh, the, the Nairobi maybe is just supposed to be the headquarters, uh -huh. yes. but yeah. the center of excellence is only in Nairobi. Yeah. And we know all over Kenya there is massive talent. Yes. I have traveled, uh, I'm a mentor with Chapadimba na Safaricom, yes. so I have traveled all over Kenya. I've been to Garissa, I've been to, uh, to Kitui, mm -hmm. I've been to Coast, to Kericho, mm -hmm. and I could see the talent that is out there, but they don't have the exposure. Yes. So the under 13 uh, Harambe stars, the under 15 Harambe stars, the under 17, uh, mm -hmm. and the under 20, and the under 23, yeah. they have been uh, having regular friendlies, regular matches, these were non-existent before. Yes, they were but never there. They were never there. Yeah. But you'd find that the same coach who's the coach of under 13, is the same coach who's, who's in under 15, mm -hmm. you'll find still the same faces in the under 17, in the under 20, and also in the under 23. Yes. So we, are, we do not lack uh, youth coaches here in Kenya. There are so many youth coaches. Yeah. Why can, uh, can, can there be um, a spread of uh, those uh, football coaches? For the center of excellence. Yes. To all over Kenya now. All over Kenya. We want the 47 counties to benefit from this center of excellence. Yeah. We want talent to be tapped from every corner of Kenya. Yeah. That is why we're bringing the politics of, uh, of inclusivity. We want to include all the stakeholders. Yeah. And you can see uh, the current regime do not have a conducive environment uh, for maybe corporates uh, or the counties. And you can see uh, the last two months we've seen the rise of other federations to rival this federation. Yeah. Mombasa County have started their own football association and uh -huh. also Makweni County. Is it good or bad? It's very bad. It's very bad for uh -huh. the federation. Yeah. We could see the e extreme Super 8 League. Uh -huh. They yes. broke away from the federation. Mm -hmm. These are people who are supposed to be members of the, of federation. the federation. And that is why we will bring the spirit of inclusivity. Yeah. We want to negotiate with all uh, stakeholders let me, let me to bring to football, short, to take football to the next level. Let me cut you short. Mm -hmm. Mombasa starting their own football federation, Garissa doing all that. Is and it Makweni. And Makweni. Is it believed that they, they, they might, they must or might have a belief that we are not well represented in the main federation in Nairobi. That's why they want to do that. Exactly. And, yeah. and as I told you, once uh, you, you are against, you are not with the federation, you are like against them. Yes. So we want to bring everyone together. If we make that conducive environment, yeah. These stakeholders will come to, will come to us. Will say uh, we want to uh, st start a, a league uh, at our county level, yeah. and that is how we will try and incorporate mm -hmm. uh, the clubs which play for in the FKF league to play in that um, in the, uh, at the county level. Yes. Uh, because you will find that there will be funding from uh, uh, f uh, f from the counties. Yeah. There will be funding from the constituency level, mm -hmm. and that is what things we want to change. Here in Nairobi, it's, it has been divided into two, two branches, yes. Nairobi East and Nairobi West, uh -huh. of which I think uh, it's a good idea, but yeah. not very well implemented. Yeah. We could have had at least eight zones here in Nairobi, uh -huh. uh, like the eight constituencies that yes. represent Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We want to have league, leagues in all those constituencies. Mm -hmm. And there's money. Yeah. There are corporates in, uh, in estates. My team, mm -hmm. I'm a chairman of uh, uh, Imara Daima Football Club, uh -huh. which is in Imara Daima, yeah. and there are companies just around us. Yeah. When we go uh, to them to give us uniform, they give us. Uh -huh. When we go to them to give us balls, they give us. Our, our MCA and our MP, who are, we are very grateful for, they always pay our affiliation fees. Yes. So there's money at the constituency level mm -hmm. and there's money at the county level. Yeah. But 
it has not been tapped. It has not been tapped. Yeah. And uh, when, when we come into the federation, we will urge these small teams uh, to uh, at least work with the, with the uh, county government and yeah. also uh, uh, the constituencies yeah. Because there's money, there's a C C D C D F money for sports, yeah. and there's also the uh, there's a ministry of sports in the in the counties. Yeah. I, I think we have moved now to mm -hmm. your link for government. I think that's where the conversation has led us at the moment. Exactly. Your link to government because now we have got the national government and then we have got the county government and all that. Is that your link to government? How are you going to work with these governments? Because I understand. The county government with devolution at the moment, many counties have come up with sports ministries at the county Very level. True. But we, it's like there is no impact for them. It's like a ministry in Kisi County, it's like a ministry in Mombasa County. But for you, how is that going to be inclusive to your government? Now, that is how there have been so many missed opportunities by the Federation. Yes. These are some of the, of the nitty gritties that mm -hmm. the Federation has to work on. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are bringing in mm -hmm. as the dynamic duo. Mm -hmm. We will have to tap on these resources. There's money, as I said, in the CDF, yes. in the county governments. There is money. Which usually goes back to treasury. Exactly, after. it goes back because it, yeah. it has not mm -hmm. be, uh, been claimed. Yeah. Now we will try and claim it for the teams which are in the county league and some branch league. Yeah. Because you find that a team from Huruma... Mm -hmm. Uh, they will play a, a league match, maybe mm -hmm. in the sub-branch or the, mm -hmm. cou uh, the uh, county uh, branches, yeah. you'll find that they'll mo go all the way to Kibera. And this is a team which do not have money. Yeah. They don't have a, a source of income. Mm -hmm. So when we incorporate them uh, and uh, we divide the zones, yeah. they will only play their matches in Stare, around Stare. Uh -huh. You'll find others play only around Embakasi East yeah. or Embakasi West or Embakasi South yeah. uh, or North. Yeah. Uh, so it will help, it will ease the burden of these teams. Yeah. And uh, wh when we find these teams that uh, their affiliation fees, which is uh, for sub-branch sub leagues, for, for sub-branch teams, their affiliation fees is 15,000. Mm -hmm. And for the uh, county league teams is 30,000. That's one. It's this is a lot of money. Or, it is paid uh, every per season, season. Uh -huh. per yeah. season. Yeah. And you know, every in every match there has to be security. Yes. So the uh, the home team has to hire uh, a cop yeah. and also medical services. So yeah. these are the things that we want to tap the yeah. resources, which is in the uh, constituency level yeah. and the county level. Yeah. A big one there for you. Everybody is talking about grassroots football and all that and youth and everything. But we've got this stakeholder which you have been helping for a very long time the welfare of the footballers and all that and more so your generation now are getting out of the game most of you now are getting out of the game you are now getting on to management and you are very young people getting on to football management how have they received you out there because even uh, you are you are former or you are senior nicolas muyot is now eyeing a seat and is a coach and all that but now how have they received your candidature outside there well, uh, obviously, there have been mixed reactions, and in politics, that's a given. Yes. There has to be a split opinions on uh, uh, who is this who wants to lead our football. Yeah. Uh, this is someone who has worked with the Federation, and uh, that is something that people have to take it in a positive way, yeah. because I know what has been going on, so I am best placed to change the things that have been going on. Yeah. I've seen what the Federation has done. I have seen what the Federation has not done. So I am best placed, together with Bonfaso Sano, yeah. to try and change uh, the nitty gritty, uh, some of the uh, of the where the, the federation has failed. We have we have a chance to correct them. We have a chance to uh, to reach their full potential yeah. on uh, to continue with the vision that they had, but did not implement fully yeah. implement. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we know, uh, I think there has been no. Uh, uh, incumbent who has defended his seat uh -huh. yes. ever since I've known football politics. Yeah. There has no one who has come, uh, c come to it a, sec a second time. Yeah. And actually it has been uh, a first for every football president. Mm -hmm. So we, might, we have a very good chance. Yeah. We have a very good chance to take this thing. Yeah. And um, uh, some of those things I've told you we want to change. Yeah. We really want to change uh, how, the, how the, uh, the fans there's also one point I had missed, yes. is the fans' inclusion. Uh -huh. There's a fan, fans' association, yeah. but it has been 
greatly neglected mm -hmm. and we want to incorporate them in the federation they have yeah. to be members of the federation mm -hmm. we have the kenya secondary school sports association yeah. and uh, the primary uh, school sports association yeah. you know uh, when uh, these upcoming footballers they are, uh, they teachers at school uh, at school level their pe teachers or their teachers in general yeah. they are tasked with grooming this uh, upcoming footballers yeah. to be responsible people in the society. Yeah. So we want to try and have a balance mm -hmm. between education yeah. and football. Yeah. So we will uh -huh. have to bring mm -hmm. the, yes. them on board. Yeah. They will have to be members of the uh, 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 members of the federation. Yes. So we want a spirit of inclusivity yeah. for all the stakeholders of football. It, uh, with that thought of inclusivity, and you mentioned the Super 8, which branched away from the Football Kenya Federation, and these are the stakeholders that we want in the game. How will you bring these people on board? Because now, those guys are also key stakeholders in the game, and they have helped Natch. I think you are one of the beneficiaries Yes, I am of one of the uh, success stories of Super 8. Yeah. And actually, when uh, uh, the, the president of uh, the league, uh, Hussein Mohammed, mm -hmm. when he was unveiling his, uh, his uh, agenda for Kenyan football when he was vying in 2011, yes. actually made a speech mm -hmm. at KICC when he was launching. Uh -huh. So, uh, as one of the success story that is, yeah. I was not really much into politics, yeah. just giving my story. Uh, but right now, I'm in, in politics fully yeah. deep, in the, um, the deep end of politics. And we have to bring them on board because, you know, even corporates uh, shy away because when yeah. they look at the federation, when they look at the, uh, at the, at the league, uh, NSL or uh, KPL, they see the same faces. Yeah and they shy away from working with them. So when there are new faces, when there are fresh ideas uh, there, they will come, we'll bring them on board. Mm -hmm. a, a project like the Sup Extreme Super 8 mm -hmm. uh, League, it's a wonderful project. Yeah. Why would you not want them to, uh, to, to be taking care of, of the youth uh, he, here in Kenya? Mm -hmm. And es especially here in Nairobi, uh, because you'll find that in Extreme uh, Super 8 matches, there were so many fans. Better than KPL. Better than KPL. Yeah. When you go for a Chapadimba tournament, uh -huh. yes. you will find so many fans. People say Machakos, do, Machakos people do not like football. Mm -hmm. But I was there with Chapadimba and Safari mm -hmm. And on Friday, there was a match between KCB and Karubangi Sharks. Yeah. You could find, uh, you can count the fans who were there. Mm -hmm. They were less than 20. Yeah. And 80% of them were journalists. Yeah. <laughs> True. So True. Um, the, next, the very next day, on Saturday and Sunday, yeah. the stadium was packed. They say Machakos people do not love football, yeah. but the stadium was packed because of the packaging, yeah. because of uh, uh, the, uh, the conducive environment that uh, the corporates are bringing in, how they, uh, they have packaged their whole uh, agenda, yeah. how they have packaged their whole tournament. It brings fans to the stadium. Yeah. So it's not a steep hill to put. They just look at the faces which are there and they shy away from working with them. From what I'm getting from you is you will work to untrust the corporate trust from corporates because if you realize that Chapadimba coming on board, they use their own resources without giving the federation any money. You look at Super 8 was the same thing. Just give us the licenses and we run the league without giving the federation any money. That trust is what you want to bridge. That now. trust is what we want to bring. You see, yeah. with the Super uh, Super Eight League mm -hmm. or uh, any league which wants to to come on board, mm -hmm. we can give them take the county leagues mm -hmm. all over Kenya, yeah. run it. Yeah. Because you have the resources, mm -hmm. you have the goodwill from corporates. Yeah. Run the county leagues. Yeah. If we have the association, uh, the county county level where they are, they're starting their own associations, we could give them uh, the regional league. Yes. Take the regional league, run it in your county. So that way we will have uh, uh, these resources being tapped. Mm -hmm. Teams will, will no longer have uh, teams not going to matches uh, because they don't have fare, yeah. they don't have food, mm -hmm. they don't have uh, uh, a hotel they can sleep in. Mm -hmm. So once we tap into these resources, a thing like clubs paying the referees will be a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. That is what we are assure, yeah. assuring uh, the football stakeholders. That is the fans, mm -hmm. the coaches, the referees, the mm -hmm. footballers, and also the league delegates who are very important mm -hmm. part in these elections. Well, a big one there for you, Innocent. I'll give Thank you, you that. Much. It's the Y254. It is the touchline here on Y. Maxwell has had just a bit of an emergency. We'll be talking to him to understand what has happened to him, but the show must go on here.
and if you are joining us, we are having a conversation with Innocent Mutiso, who is the first chairman, and their leader is Bonfess Osano, a sports journalist, who is actually now running for the presidency of Football Kenya Federation here in the country. And the, he is giving us their agenda and what they plan to do with football. Many things that we are talking about, but now it is the ultimate one, professionalism. Because the league has lacked that, and that's why we've got all these problems coming in. I, I remember reading the one of the first football chairmen in Kenya has got to be the late Honorable Kenneth Matiba. And back in the 90s, professionalism was running all over the world, and that is what we wanted to introduce in Kenya. But many people could not allow him to do that. I don't want to put you on that hot seat for professionalism, but can we achieve it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And yeah. as, as I said, yeah. uh, once we implement the club licensing, once we start implementing it step by step, yeah. we will reach those goals. Yeah. Uh, that is where the federation has failed. If they started it bit by bit, yeah. since they came into the uh, foray in 2016, yeah. right now we will be full professionals. We are semi-professional uh, currently. Yeah. Our leagues are semi-professional. And uh, they are, uh, below KPL, they're just amateurs. Yeah. So we want to bring that professionalism, and it is achievable. Yeah. Once we implement um, the club licensing fully, yes. we want clubs no longer operating on zero balance or mm -hmm. operating on overdrafts. Yes. We want to have a minimum balance, and we will be mon monitoring these things. At least 10 million, so that we know uh, this is the minimum balance for this team. They, can, they, are, they will be able to pay this player from January to December. Yeah. We, will, we will start a circle where the players can, uh, can contribute, the referees or the coaches, because they know very well that at the end of the month or at the first or the fifth of the month, there's something that is a must that it will get into their accounts. Yes. We take something from, uh, from there and put on the circle. This is their money. It's not yes. our money. It's their money. Mm -hmm. But they will have a way of, of investing. I'm very lucky to have been... Uh, 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 to have grown up in the Ma Madari Youth or uh -huh. the Maisa setup, yes. Uh, where uh, when I was in Madari Madari Youth, the, we had uh, the Jamibora Microfinance, mm -hmm. and every month because we used to receive uh, m monies every month, yeah. uh, uh, salary, yeah. they used to deduct a certain amount of money and put it in the uh, Jamibora in our Jamibora accounts. Yes. It was mandatory for everyone. Yeah. It was mandatory. So if we do that, it, uh, uh, w when doing that, you'll find that uh, after three months, you could take a loan. If yeah. you want to start a business, you start. If you want to expand your business, you can. Yeah. If you want to buy one or two, th uh, three things, you have. And actually, that is the money which made me uh, shift from my parents' place to go to my place. Uh -huh. Because I yes. took a loan after three months, mm -hmm. and I started buying things for my house. Yes. So it will be a very good thing if we incorporate this in the KPL, mm -hmm. uh, in the NSL. Mm -hmm. And this is where for coming comes in or yeah. if there will be a football union this is where they come in yeah. this is where they will um, they'll have a huge responsibilities mm -hmm. of also taking care of the footballers in the grassroots yeah. because also them they will be having their monies mm -hmm. from as I said tapping from the constituency level yeah. and from the county levels they will also have their money that they can save in the circle so this will bring at least a level of uh, professionalism also in the clubs. We no longer want clubs to, to be um, depending on the KPL or the FK for grants. Very much. That will be a thing of the past. And then your final word now as you finish, tell us what is your final word is and do you see a bright future for Kenyan football? <sighs> well, uh, that depends largely on the delegates. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, since the current regime was... Uh, uh, was brought in. Yeah. It was all uh, rosy mm -hmm. and uh, things were good, but there's a level that it reached mm -hmm. that people got fed up and everyone was complaining. Yeah. So if they want another four years of complaining, mm -hmm. then they will vote uh, wrong people. Yes. But if they want a whole new setup, yeah. if they want uh, football to be taken to the, ne to the next level, then vote for the dynamic duo. We do not have money to, uh, to give the, uh, the delegates. Yes. Uh, we only have our agenda to sell. And uh, they should vote with their minds. Yes. And their hearts. They should know that we have football at heart. The people who are, our, actually our rivals, do not have football at heart. Yes. If I, I saw someone, uh, one of the aspirants in, uh, in, uh, in the social media uh, donating footballs, and you could see 
these are just footballs which are being hooked in the streets. We are done They're with like that. 300 Kenya, uh, Kenya shillings, yes. which when you use it, because in the grassroots, you find they are not good grounds. Mm -hmm. So after two days, the ball is uh, yeah. it's done. It's, uh, it looks like a duster. Yeah. I have, uh, I've seen the other administrators who have been there and did nothing. Yeah. They want to come back. What new thing will, will they show us? Yes. I've seen also uh, another who, who's quoted actually live on TV saying that, He's eyeing a seat in the gubernatorial race uh -huh. uh, in 2022, yes. and the term right now from 2020 to 2024, it, it will be the running term. So, is are they using the football elections as a springboard for Kenyan politics? Mm -hmm. So, people should try and at least uh, vote for people who have football in heart, who have the players at heart. Yes, and we will take football to the next level. Thanks a lot, Innocent, for Thank coming to us here. That has been Innocent Mutiso. He's a former international player for Kenya, played for Madara United, won the league with Gormaya. And also Madara United. And, oh, in the 2018? Yes, I was in that team. Oh, man, you were young then. <laughs> Very young. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is Jerry Gazia to talk about the agenda with Bonfess Osano as they seek to run for the Football Kenya president. Hope they are going to win because we're just, we are not favoring anyone but they are the outsiders in this musical game of chairs. We'll be right back, but for now, enjoy the PSG and Bayern Munich Champions League final. When we come back, it will be the fan zone here on the touchline.